Fellas, in this video we're going to talk about a creature who walks on two legs, a creature capable of doing incredible claw damage, and a voice that only a mother could love. You're right, we're talking about the mic. Hello, my name is Adelokta and in this video we're going to talk about how to properly fight as a mipe. Now first of all, any future updates may change the way you play as this creature. And also, uh, yeah, it, it's not an understatement to say that my time with the mipe are limited. To be completely honest, I find mipe fun to kill rather than playing as it. I could fall asleep with those noises, but ASMR got away. Let's go back to the matter at hand. In this video, we will be going over the MIPE's arsenal, the subspecies you should choose to grow, its terrain compatibility, its fighting style, and the type of fights you can find yourself in. The arsenal is quite vast, and the first category of abilities don't have any names, but it has three abilities. The first one being actually nothing. The second one does increase your speed at the cost of some armor. The last one are defense, which increases your armor at the cost of some speed. There are two abilities on head ability, the first one being a vampiric bite, that actually heals you, but it does little to really disappointing damage. The other ability are just a standard ability, no effect whatsoever, but it causes a bit more damage than the other one, so it, it got that going for it. Like your wallet, the sense category are empty, but the front limb ability has got two options, and you can equip both of them. The charge ability inflicts bleed damage according to how long you let the ability charge. And yes, you do strike a T-pose when using this ability. So I guess the icon actually represent what they do. And the other one is just your standard fish slap attack that causes bleed. For hide you have two options, well one doesn't really count because it does literally nothing. The other one does increase your bleed and venom recovery, so that's good. You have two backlimps abilities, one being long distance runner that increases your stamina. The other one attraction that increases your turning radius at the cost of stamina recovery. And yes, I will come back to this later on which one I recommend and why. The tail ability, you have two options, you have the standard tail attack that causes light damage and the other one being balanced tail. It increases your turning radius and this is a bit of a uh, up for debate category so I hope I at least piss off one of you. Your two call abilities, one being able to increase your damage output and the other one increasing your bleeding capabilities. Also, both of these uh, calls can be stacked. I'm not going to try to include this matter, I'm just going to return to this later in this video. When it comes to what subspecies you should choose to grow, I kinda uh, had to put this up for debate for among you guys. In my opinion, I just found the standard one to be good and there are more variations of the mic. I'm not really too sure what each of the variation actually does. It might just be aesthetics, but you won't really go wrong by just picking the standard uh, subspecies. When it comes to what terrain you should choose to fight in, Open field works for the mic, it's nothing wrong with that, but also in an area with a bit more hindrances work for the mic as well, especially if you're going to fight larger creatures. However, the mic can jump, so I wouldn't really recommend an area with too much ups and downs. I say this every damn video, but again, your fighting style depends on what creature you're going to fight against. For example, you're not going to fight a rex the same way you fight a raptor. The might be a mod, so it's a bit difficult to say just what the standard stat for the wipe is, as they can always be adjusted. However, on most servers they are portrayed as mid-tiers, so you can assume that their stats will be among mid-tier stats. However, every creature have their own brawling potential, and in the wipe's case, well, the Mipe aren't really that good of a brawler, at least not a head-to-head -head fighter. Don't misunderstand me, there are fights where the Mipe definitely can win a head-to-head -head clash, but that is only if the opponent has inferior stats compared to the Mipe. With that in mind, 
it doesn't take a genius to figure out that against a creature with superior stats than you, you should definitely do a hit and run tactic. You have decent speed and incredible bleeding potential. Use that to your advantage. Against creature that does have inferior stats compared to you, then you're welcome to do a head-to-head -head clash. Question is, will the opponent be stupid enough to do that? Like I just said, fighting something that has superior stats compared to you is a stupid move. Use your incredible bleeding potential to slowly but surely wear them down over time. If your opponent has charge up abilities of his own, then you should activate yours just a few seconds after he activated his. That way, as your opponent are in his cooldown, you may avoid any critical injuries. If you get low on stamina, just dip out and recover it, continue this cycle over a period of time, and you might be able to kill him over time. By the way, against Apexes, I do recommend this arsenal. It is just much better suited for hits and run. With time, you'll be able to kill your target. These types of fights can last for over longer periods of time, so I hope you have patience. I will recommend you not to fight something that has incredibly big uh, stat difference. They will usually end up the way you see on screen. It becomes even more difficult if they take away your mobility or your ability to move around. In these types of situations, they are forcing you into a more head-to-head -head fight. You know, the fighting style that the MIPE are not particularly strong at. In which case, the odds are against you and it's better to just give up. Against mid tiers, I recommend this arsenal. It's still suited for hits and run, but if it comes down to it, head to head clash are still an option, though I would recommend that only if the chance presents itself. There might be a glass cannon, so you need to use the same strategy as you do against Apexes. Get that bleed in and slowly but surely get them down with time. Doing head to head clash with most mid tiers can prove fatal. This is because the might on most servers don't usually have that good rate of health. Against most mid tiers you still need to utilize the hit and run strategy. Most mid tiers are just better built for head to head clash, at least better suited than you. The only mid tiers you can really fight and win in a head to head clash are those who's also not too good with head to head clashes. A good reminder of uh, which one are usually the ones you can win in a head to head clash with are usually the ones who's faster than you. If you're faster than them, that usually means you can't beat them in a head to head fight. However, if it's the opposite, then the odds should be in your favor. Against low tiers, it shouldn't be too problematic. Just force them into a head to head clash and then beat them when they have no stamina. Usually, this is a strategy against pouncers. In these types of fights, I recommend this arsenal. It is the best suited for head to head clashing, something low tiers are really bad at. One shouldn't be too much of a problem. But if it's an army, then uh, it could be problematic. If you do get attacked by a pack, then you could just do the water strategy and just walk into a place where they can't reach the bottom. However, that strategy are dangerous due to obvious reasons. In which case, there aren't too much you can do, not alone at least. In summary, against Apexes, Investigate everything you have into the bleed attacks and hit and run strategy. And for the love of everything, do not do head to head clashing. With time you might be able to kill your target, however this does require a amount of skills and patience, so I wouldn't really do this alone. Against mid tiers, you still gotta use the hit and run strategy. However, against mid tiers, due to them having lower HP than Apexes, 
you might be able to do a head-to-head -head clash. At least the odds are 50-50 against the ones who's just as bad with head-to-head -head clashing. Against low tiers, just force them into a head-to-head -head clash and then proceed to beat the ever-living crap out of them. If you have any specific creature you want me to cover, then go to my community post and there you will see how to suggest and vote for a creature. And with that, I will see you guys later. Sayonara!